Dr. Eric Staffney, our fruit crop extension specialist, is joining us today to demonstrate thinning peaches. Welcome back to Oklahoma Gardening, Eric. Thank you, Kim. Well, before we get started with our demonstration, can you explain why we need to thin our fruit trees? Sure, there's several reasons that we need to thin fruit trees, and one of them is to get larger fruit, which is something we all like to see. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't thin, sometimes you get really small fruit and fruit that's not as sweet either, so that's another reason to to enhance the quality. Okay, so if there's more fruit, the sugars maybe get distributed among? It kind of gets among... diluted among okay. all the different uh, fruit that are on the tree, so by that we can concentrate it somewhat. Another really important reason is that if you have a very heavy fruit set, it can actually stress the tree significantly, mm -hmm. and it can also uh, damage the tree. Because of all you, that weight? All the weight, mm -hmm. and it can actually break the scaffold limbs. Okay, and do we need to thin our fruit trees every year? Not every year. Sometimes Mother Nature takes care of that for us. Mm -hmm. uh, but in case this year uh, we didn't have a freeze, so now we need to look at how much fruit is actually set on that tree and how much is going to go forward. So we need to think about taking some of it off. And last year we actually lost all our fruit to a freeze. Would the tree this year respond by producing more fruit? It would. It would. Trees generally have that, they store that kind of energy that they mm -hmm. haven't been able to expend in earlier years. So now it's going to try and uh, produce more fruit. Okay, and let's look at the timing. How do, what do we look for in our fruits to identify the proper timing? Okay, well in this case, um, peaches can be thinned pretty much at two different times or mm -hmm. a series of times. First is at bloom, so when the flowers are on there, but that's always a little bit risky because you never know that at that bloom time, we never know if we're gonna have a freeze. So the best time really is to wait until the fruit is actually set and growing. and right about the size when it's about the size of a dime or a nickel is perfect okay. because it comes off easily and you can see it mm -hmm. uh, you want to do it before the pit hardens okay. and the pit will start to harden about the size of a quarter and when you're talking about the size you're looking at right. the diameter that's around right. the fruit that's right okay so this is a perfect size to start thinning mm -hmm. now you notice here we've got one two three four five six fruit in a very small area here okay so what i you know, as a general rule of thumb, I like to keep uh, fruit about the width of a hand okay. apart. So in this case, I'm going to take off some of these smaller fruit, and just by pinching them, they mm -hmm. come off very easily. I like to keep the largest fruit, so I might keep these two, these three, um, and I wouldn't keep any more than two in a, in a small area like this. So here you've got uh, adequate space for those to grow and develop. We have a couple more in here. Do we want to thin those? Right. Um, this is kind of a side shoot that doesn't have much growth on it. I might just leave one on that area right here. So on this whole branch, we've got about four fruit. Okay. Now what about the upper part of the tree? Of course, our peach is fairly large. It's very easy to get to the bottom. We could get a ladder, but are there other techniques for Sure. There's removing? another technique that we could use, and that's just by getting like a pole or a stick and just thrashing the top. If you do that, you can actually knock those out of there. Uh, okay. It'd be great if we could demonstrate that. Okay. What we're looking for in the top of the tree is just trying to, d to gauge how many fruit we have up there and which ones we want to knock off. So that's just a, a matter of kind of looking. You might have to walk around the tree a couple of times and seeing uh, where the real clusters of fruit are. And then you take a stick and just hit at those clusters until you knock some fruit off. Well, Eric, what other fruit trees need to be thinned in our orchard? Well, uh, almost every type of fruit tree needs to be thinned at some years. So mm -hmm. uh, the peaches, the apricots, and plums are going to have similar thinning techniques. Okay. But the palm fruits, like apples and pears, are going to be slightly different. Okay. Why don't we demonstrate that? We have our uh, apple tree here, and this year we're seeing a good fruit set. We have a good fruit set here and, and when we talked about the peaches it's the same concepts that mm -hmm. um, relate to apples as well but apples produce fruit in a different way they produce it on these clusters so there'll be several fruit in a single cluster and that's going to be a lot of uh, competing fruit on there and they also may set clusters very close to each other so here's one here and, and here. And there's a third and down And then there's below. a mm -hmm. third one here. So what we want to do is either do it, remove an entire cluster. So that's very easy. They just pop right off. And so just leaving one cluster. 
or we can come through and actually remove some of the fruit within a cluster just by pinching. So here we go and just pinch right off, come off very easily and leave maybe only two fruit per cluster. And how far should the clusters be spaced apart on the branch? Oh, you'd like to have them oh, six to eight inches apart at least. Between the two clusters. Between the two. Um, that should be sufficient. And then we'll remove anything else in between. Any fruit that's in between, right. that's correct. Okay.